when, when you're ready, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's recording. It's recording, yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, can everybody hear me? Yeah. At the back? Brand name, but perhaps just what they're selling. 
Also, I'd like you to think about what techniques do the advertisers use to sell the product? or to persuade the consumer to buy it. The cross with SR is much more than a nice taste. It's a team that helps. It tells you something very important. Good tea. Fresh tea. Tea you can take to the last delicious. I like to teach the world to say sing with me. I was just thinking, it's, it's, you're a bit far, I'll tell you a thing, but uh, the lectern will block you.
you do. They always use this colour, so it's almost like a brand, isn't it? A brand colour. Okay, well, you did very well on that. Anybody get ten? Nine? Okay, right, so we're thinking about adverts. All right, so perhaps a little late, my overview for this talk is to give a brief advertising background, then look at the purpose of advertising, arguments for and against advertising, and finally some different roles of advertising to show you the different ways that advertising works. So first of all, let's look at advertising background. Um, the origin of the word advertising, hundreds of years ago, was to draw attention to something, and usually this was from person to person. So one person telling somebody else about something. Now it kind of means the same, if you like. Adverts are trying to draw your attention to a product or a service or a brand. So advertising is the most common media form really. Um, you'll find it everywhere as I said. And it's big business today. 15 billion pounds are expected to be spent on advertising in the UK this year. I'll repeat that. 15 billion pounds. Billion. Not million, billion. It's a lot of money, so you can see it's very big business. <laughs> Interestingly, half of that will be spent, so half of that amount, 7.5 billion, will be spent on digital, advertising on digital media. This is perhaps a change from the past. Um, so digital media, we're talking about the internet and social media. As you know, things pop up on your Facebook every time you open it now. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the history. Um, about 400 years ago, the first ads appeared in newspapers. So it's quite a long time ago. But it was really in the 19th century, that's 18 something, the 1800s, that advertising started to expand, to grow bigger. There was a growth of advertising. That's mainly because during that time, especially in the UK, many factories began to manufacture and produce lots and lots and lots of consumer uh, products, really goods. So people were beginning to buy more things, manufacturers, producers wanted to actually sell their products, they didn't want to just make the products, and then how do you tell, how do you tell the customer that you've made all these new products? So this is why advertising started to grow at the same time as the growth of manufacturing. Manufacturing is making things, producing products. So this expansion of manufactured goods and products to sell led to an increase in advertising. The advertisers created a market for these new products. So people thought, oh, got a new product, we might buy it. Also, as most of the adverts were in newspapers, it was the first time that pictures and words had been used together in adverts. So it was an important time for advertising. Things changed a little bit in the 20th century, especially in the early 20th century, so we're talking here about 19 about the 1910s, 1910 to 1920, governments 
started to become interested, interested in the power of advertising. They saw that advertising can persuade people to do things. And one example of this is a poster that I'm going to show you here from the, sec the First World War. The aim of this poster was to recruit soldiers to go into the army in the First World War. First World War was really more of a European war, so the British were fighting the Germans, and we needed more soldiers in Britain, we needed more soldiers to fight, because a lot of them were dying. So the government came up with this poster to try and attract more soldiers to join the army. Now, you can see from this poster, it's very simple. But its message is clear. Think about the language it's using. Your country, not the country, your country needs you. And if you look at the image, it's actually pointing directly to you. You can't escape. You, 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 and you. So it's that direct form of messages. It's giving you a message directly. And the image with the pointed finger, excuse me, pointing it out with the pointed finger is very direct. It was actually a very <coughs> successful poster. And a lot of people did actually join the army as a result of it. Okay. Um, from the 1920s, there was a shift in advertising to advertising as a mass medium. It actually could broadcast to a mass audience, to millions and millions of people. Why? Because radio, the invention of radio, and people started to get radios in their homes, I'm talking about the Western countries more here, obviously, but let's say in the UK and America. <laughs> Advertising on the radio started, opportunity to speak to people in their homes, and also in the cinema. The cinema was really, really popular. Um, but as you probably know, in the 19, until about 1935, 1936, or the 30s, most of the cinema was silent movies. And in the 30s, we began to get sound as well. So in the cinema and on the radio, there was a growth in advertising. But the main expansion, or the main growth, was in the 1950s. This was for two reasons. Television. Television became very, very popular. People started to buy it put it in their houses. Family gathered around the television and the start of independent television stations who were using advertising, who had adverts on them. Okay. But with that came a growth in consumer, in a consumer boom. Now that means at this time in the 1950s, many people had good jobs, they started to get good jobs, and they could afford to buy consumer products. Consumer products such as things for the house, vacuum cleaners, radios, TVs even, um, convenience foods, fast foods, things which would make their lives easier. So people were <coughs> buying before the 1950s and the 1940s had been wartime, people didn't have much spare money, so there wasn't a chance for them to buy things. But in the 50s, there was good jobs, more money, more spending. So television gave a chance for advertisers to put sound and images together, <coughs> sound and images for the first time, and broadcast them directly 
into people's houses. So it was very important. In the 1980s and 90s, you had branding and product placement, which I'll go, I'll talk a little bit about later on. And with the 2000s, obviously something I'm sure you're familiar with, social media and internet advertising. So that's a little bit of a background on the history of advertising. I'd like to move on now to the purpose of advertising. Could you tell your partner, what is the purpose? There are two, what's the purpose of advertising? Try and give a bit more information than perhaps you can see in the PowerPoint. Can you expand that definition a little bit? Advertisers 
pay to put ads in the newspaper and that advertising finances gives the newspaper owner the money they need to produce the newspaper. The newspaper has lots of adverts so the advertisers think it's a good idea because the people are reading the articles and they can see the advertisements at the same time. So they are prepared to pay for those advertisements. Oh, television programs. Who pays for the television program? Who pays the actors? I'm not talking about the BBC, which is financed by, we pay a license fee for the BBC, but all the independent, the commercial companies, who pays the actors? Who pays the producers? Where do they get the money from? Where do the television companies get the money from? Advertising, yeah, from the advertisements. Also some other things as well, sometimes they sell the programs, but advertisements make a substantial payment towards the cost of making television programs. Films as well. Okay, the next point in favour of advertising is perhaps, some people say, choice. Ads give you a wide range of choice. You know, they tell you about the, the whole range of products. So if you go to the supermarket and you see 20 shampoos, if you've seen some advertisements for some of them, you know perhaps what shampoo you want to choose. You may disagree with that argument, but some people say it gives you, advertising gives you more choice. The third one is sponsorship. A lot of advertisers, sorry, a lot of companies sponsor, which is a form of advertising, sponsor the arts or sports. For example, you can see in this image here, do you know the company O2? Okay, it's, um, I think they have mobile phones and so on. They're a large company. They sponsored the Rugby World Cup. So they paid money to the Rugby, rugby World Cup to help them to put the rugby, rugby World Cup to stage the Rugby World Cup and in return they could put their logo, O2, on the sportsman's shirts and they probably had it around the sports grounds as well. So this sponsoring, they're not selling their product, they don't get anything back, maybe they get a couple of free tickets, but that's all. But they want their brand to be known to the public. So there's a lot of money that goes into this sports sponsorship. It is a kind of advertising. If you think of the Olympic Games, without the sponsors, like Coca-Cola, probably the Olympic Games wouldn't happen. Maybe the World Cup as well. So it's, it's an argument in favour. Um, the next argument in favour is that it informs us, advertising informs us of new products. So how do you know when the new iPhone is coming out? An advertisement. They'll have an ad advertising campaign. So information about new products comes through advertising. And the last one is that advertising can help stimulate consumption. Stimulate consumption means encourage people to buy things which then leads to benefits for the whole economy of the country. Okay. Say that again. That advertising encourages people to buy things, to buy more, when people buy things, you have to pay a sales tax. You're also helping business because they become more profitable. So both
both with helping business and paying the taxes, actually this can help the economy of the country. So the more people, the more people buy, the more the economy grows. And advertising helps people, well not helps people, encourages people, motivates people, you might say, to spend more, to buy more. So increased consumption because of advertising leads to benefits for the economy. Hey, let's look at some arguments against. Lots of arguments for, let's try against. Okay. First one is false hopes. Can you see that rather perfect looking face on that woman there? And the advert says, say goodbye to aging skin. I think I need this one. <laughs> but really, if I bought that at 50 pounds a jar or whatever it costs, I think I would have a slight, they would be encouraging me to have false hopes. I think it's too late. <laughs> but advertising like that, anti-aging creams, things like that, can create false hopes in people. They don't think they're going to look like that, but they really hope that they'll look a lot better. Maybe they will. But a lot of people who argue against advertisements say that actually they create hopes that just will never happen, false hopes. So that's one of the arguments against. Another one is that advertising helps to increase our insecurities. Insecurities means that we don't feel that good about ourselves. It makes us question our capability or the possibility of things we can do. For example, sometimes some advertisements, not so much now but in the past, they used to have this sort of housewife who wasn't getting the breakfast, you know, she was rushing around, she couldn't look after her children properly. So they said, oh, buy this food, buy this um, breakfast cereal. It's really quick, your children can have breakfast in two minutes and you'll be the perfect mother. Okay? That kind of advertising, that's a bit obvious, but in in some ways, some advertisements still actually make you feel bad because you haven't bought this product for some reason. You're not being the perfect woman, the perfect wife, the perfect husband, whatever your role is. Okay? The next one is unrealistic role models, which especially for is a concern for younger, younger people, both young teenagers, perhaps boys and girls now, is this sort of unrealistic role model. So these adverts that have these very tall, skinny models who are considered beautiful um, and that people want to be like them. So most of these, you know, not many people look like that. And whatever you want to do, it's unrealistic really to think that you might achieve it. And the last one is that advertising has influence on the content of printed texts and programs. <laughs> this means that the advertiser can somehow influence the program which is being made. Let me tell you perhaps an example of this. Um, maybe there's a food program on television, and the food program is about healthy food. You know, you must eat five vegetables a day, don't eat fast food, so on. But in the advertisement break, there is an ad for McDonald's. Okay. So, McDonald's, as much as you like it, is perhaps not the healthiest food in the world. So, McDonald's can sometimes, or the advertiser can sometimes,
sometimes, some people say, influence what is said in the actual program around the advert. So maybe the program doesn't mention that perhaps fast food, such as hamburgers, is not healthy, you know, is, is not healthy. So the advertisement actually can influence what is said in the program. So McDonald's in the advertisement break, but in the program, maybe the presenter doesn't want to say, don't eat fast food because it's unhealthy. Because the, the advertiser is paying for the program. So that's the final <laughs> argument against. You might have some other ones and I'd be interested to hear them. Okay, um, for the last part of my talk, we're going to look at um, the different roles of advertising in four areas. So selling one product or service, um, looking at branding and product placement, um, public information campaigns, and charity advertising. So, first of all, when selling a product, advertisers use some techniques, some of which we've talked about already. <coughs> um, some of them, for example, positive images. So, an advertiser will produce something that's attractive. People want to, you know, a nice desert island with sun, people lying on the beach, relaxing, positive images. Or something that's useful, how you can use something. Or something that's time-saving. You know, if you use this product, you'll have more time to relax, to go out and enjoy yourself with your friends. Or things that are convenient. Or creating a lifestyle or a dream life that you can have too. So those are some of the positive images. Also, they use persuasive language. How do they persuade you? We had one example already of the use of you. You can have this. So talking directly to the audience or the reader. You. You can do this. You can have this. The use of short, active words like buy it now, buy. It's amazing. <laughs> or love. You know, love is a very common word in adverts. So, this kind of language. Or the use of songs and music, another technique. So, what we're going to do is actually look at an ad for Old Spice. Old Spice. So, what I'd like you to just think about when you've looked at it is, what is the product and who is it for? Who is the ad addressed to? So who are they talking to in the ad? Who is going to buy the product? And what is the message, if you like? What is the ad trying to tell you? What kind of lifestyle is it trying to sell? Do you like it or not? Why and why not? Sadly, he isn't. But if we stop using ladies' scented body wash, 
which are old spice he could smell like he's Look down, back up. Where are you? You're on a boat. With the man, your man could smell it. What's in your head? Back me. I am. It's an oyster. Do you think it's a thing you love? Look her here. The tickets are now dying. Anything is possible when your man smells like old spice and not a lady. I know, of course. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back to your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies' scented body wash with which are old spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat. With the man, your man could smell like What's in your head? Back to me. I am. It's an oyster. Two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now dying. Anything is possible when your man smells like old spice and not a lady. I know, of course. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Look at your back. All right. Would you like to answer those questions with your partner? Um, I think maybe now would be a good time to change over. Yeah. How, how much longer? Okay, I'll change now.